Hey guys, Pete here. Today I'm going to do an Ozark Season 3 Ending Explained video. I just binged through the third season of Ozark on Netflix and was pleasantly surprised with how much I enjoyed it. I had mixed feelings about Season 2. It had some great moments and some good things going on, but there were also some things that I didn't think were working. I was still interested in where the story would go, though, and I think Season 3 turned out to be a much stronger offering. Before we start, this is your spoiler warning. This video will spoil everything that's happening in all three seasons of Ozark. So if you're not caught up through season three, episode 10, this video will not be for you. Ozark season three picks up six months after the season two finale. The cold open takes place in Mexico where a horrific bombing occurs. Later we get context that it's an act of war and a conflict between the Navarro cartel, who Marty washes money for, and their rivals, the Lagunas cartel. This conflict is something that Wendy will see as something she can use, and that drives a wedge between between the birds in the first half of the season. Before we get into where things end in season three, let's look at where everyone starts out at in the beginning. Marty Bird is stuck. He managed to save his skin by getting the casino project approved, but things aren't good in his marriage with Wendy. While this has always been an unhappy marriage since we met them, things are worse now because he blames her for further entangling the family with the cartel after shutting down his plan to take them on the run. By using the cartel's henchmen to kill Ruth's dad, Cade Langmore, who had it coming to him for what it's worth, she jumped in with both feet and decided to embrace the lifestyle rather than leave it behind. In the beginning of season three, Marty is shooting down Wendy's plans for expansion. He makes his objections known to her, but he also works behind the scenes to undermine her efforts. And that includes bribing a local couple's therapist to take his side when they visit her. They're doing this for the marriage. They're doing this for the kids. They promised the kids that they would see this therapist. And Sue, the therapist, turned out to be a fun new character, but she meets a terrible end, just like so many people who meet the birds in this story. At work, at the casino, he's trying to continue to launder the Navarro cartel's money, but he's under pressure because of Agent Evans, the ex-boyfriend of Agent Petey, who the feds, they think that Petey was killed on Marty's orders. We know that it was actually Cade who was responsible for that, but the authorities think that Marty was behind it. Wendy does see an opportunity to take advantage of the chaos surrounding the Navarro cartel who are at war. She thinks that she can expand their operations into legit hotels and casinos, setting up a stream of perfectly legal income on the side that cartel chief Omar Navarro can leave behind for his children if he meets an unfortunate end. She does this working with Helen Pierce, who's been getting waterboarded by the cartel goons. We saw that in an early scene of hers to make sure she's still being loyal. And Helen arranges for for Wendy to have a face-to-face -face sit down with the boss. In the end, he approves the plan, which puts Wendy on the hook for all that she's promised him beyond just laundering the cartel's money. Helen and Wendy look like they're on the way to becoming powerful allies, running things behind the scenes for the cartel, and Helen even relocates to lakefront property for the summer to be closer to the casino and to the birds. The third key player, and my personal favorite, is Ruth Langmore, the local small-timer that has elevated herself all the way up to being an essential member of the birds' operation. She's been attempting to pay for Wyatt, her cousin, who's estranged from her. She's trying to pay for his college. He knows that she killed his father, so he doesn't want anything to do with her or her money. He gets himself locked up, and he won't even take her money to be bailed out. That brings him in contact with Darlene Snell, the local psychopath who killed her husband at the end of season two. She got in trouble because she's going around being Darlene. She slashed the tires of one of the moms that was in her parenting class. And when she overhears that Wyatt won't take Ruth's money, she decides to bail him out instead. With that out of the way, we can go to the ending of Ozark Season 3. We can look at the major characters and where they end up while working backwards to fill in the details of how they got there. The one thing that stands out about the finale is that it ends in a way that feels like a cliffhanger to establish a fourth season rather than an open-ended series finale that leaves you thinking about what's going to happen to these characters. I think at least the writers are planning on doing a fourth season. 
I guess it all depends if Netflix decides to pick it up again. But that's the feeling I got at the end, which I think will make a lot of people happy. Marty and Wendy manage to survive one more time, but they find themselves way deeper into their association with the cartel. And they also have to make a big sacrifice. They have to sacrifice the life of Wendy's younger brother, Ben. Meanwhile, everyone else, all the other criminal elements here in town end up together in opposition to the birds, including Ruth, who has finally had enough of Marty. She teams up with Darlene. So now we have Team Bird and Team Snell, and Team Snell includes the Langmores and the Kansas City mob. Coming into season three, the real value that Marty and Wendy had was that they could present themselves as upstanding citizens and operate as such. I had the feeling as season three was progressing that this is going to be harder and harder for them to do in the future. Because they started out not trusting each other, Marty was going behind Wendy's back. He was spying on her. He got caught for that when she called Navarro and that sent him down to Mexico, which caused the cascade of problems. Wendy tried to further their standing doing what she was doing working closely with Helen but eventually Helen starts to lose patience with the deal as they push through and get a second casino that brings the FBI in on a warrant and puts this new agent Maya Miller right inside Marty's office making things much more difficult as far as laundering the Navarro money. The real problem that presents itself, though, is Wendy's younger brother, Ben. We've had some mention of him in the past. We knew there was something going on with his mental health. They were worried that maybe Jonah had problems, and that's where we first heard of him. We learned that he is bipolar. He shows up on the run from a bench warrant, and I have to mention, his introduction scene was pretty amazing. I knew her brother was going to be involved in the season, so I figured out as I was watching that this crazy teacher was probably probably her brother. I thought that was a fantastic introduction to the new character. Either way, he ends up at the casino. They can't keep their criminal activity hid from him. Things get much worse, in my opinion, whenever he falls in love with Ruth, because, you know, Ruth needs some good stuff in her life, and we all see that this didn't turn out that way, because while he may be a strange character, he does seem to be all right until he wants to become intimate with her. His meds are messy things up for that so he decides to go off of them and of course that leaves everything ending in tragedy. The lead up to his death, the situation with him and Wendy, it's definitely the emotional high point of the season. It is heartbreaking. The turning point of things, of course, was that cascade of events I mentioned. First, he falls for Ruth. Then he sees Marty get abducted by Navarro's men, which led to him finding out exactly what was going on, who they work with, what they do. He became more unhinged as he's off his meds. He shows up and he ruins a charity event making a public spectacle and they have to have him committed. But Ruth is able to, through Wyatt and Darlene, get him out. And then things go completely off the rails. As if all of this wasn't enough, From that point, Ben just continues to dig his own grave. He leaves the Snell farm where he was hidden out. He makes a public appearance at the casino to tell Ruth that he loves her. That puts him on the radar of the cartel. Goes to Helen's house, and this is basically the thing that he can't take back. He tells her daughter the truth of what she does, how she works for a Mexican drug lord. That pretty much seals his fate. Wendy tries desperately to figure out another option. As they drive across the country trying to figure something out Wendy realizes that she has to give him up she sees this in all their little interactions that she can't trust him and so she leaves him alone after they eat and Helen's personal hitman Frank Nelson he shows up and takes care of Ben There's a lot of implications to Ben's death. Jonah now hates his family. Initially, he sees it as Helen killing his uncle. That sends him over to Helen's house to try to shoot her, and she tells him the truth that her mother signed off on it. Ben showing up at Helen's house ended Helen's trust in the birds, and then she goes to make a move on them, and it's also finally the thing that pushes Ruth away from the birds. As mentioned, it was really emotional. The actor Tom Pelfrey, who plays Ben, did a masterful job. 
really like the performance in the episode nine opening where he's talking to the taxi driver and really just every step of the way as we watch Ben spiral down. Marty does step up to comfort Wendy in the situation. They seem to become a little bit closer, but either way, Wendy killed her brother and she's never going to be the same. Based on what we see from Jonah at the end, he's firing shots into the plate glass window. He's losing his mind. The family's never going to be the same. Helen had come there to do her job and it looked like things were going to go well. When things started to turn, we saw her go behind Wendy and Marty's back, talking to Navarro, getting things set up. She got her name added to the gaming license so she could take the casino away. She went to the FBI with a fake confession saying Marty was going to turn state's evidence. And she even got Ruth to agree to come work for her if Marty and Wendy were out of the picture. She wasn't doing this on her own. Like a good soldier, she was getting approval from the cartel. Marty and Wendy understood that she was doing this behind their back, and they realized that the only way that they could make it out alive was to make themselves more valuable to Navarro than she was. They come up with a plan that Marty can use the FBI to intervene against the rival cartel. Since they hit the truck in the US, the FBI could use that to go after them in Mexico. Jonah getting a drone pays off as we see that stills from his video that he took with Ben can be used as evidence to put things into motion. It works because Marty and Wendy helped him win his drug war. Navarro chooses them over Helen. When they arrive in Mexico for their meeting, Helen's planning on showing him the evidence that Marty is working behind his back and she's promptly dispatched with a shot right in the head, right in front of the birds, which is followed up with him saying, today is our beginning. Helen is out of the way and Marty and Wendy are now truly owned by the cartel. It was their only way to get out of the situation, but now they have a whole new problem in that there's no way they can escape being under his control. The family is in bad shape as a result. As mentioned, Jonah is furious. I'm sure that will transfer over to Charlotte as well, since they talk about everything together. This season made a big point of that. Losing Ruth from their side is a big loss. She has every reason to leave. They killed her father, who arguably brought it on himself, but she was truly in love with Ben. It was one thing that she finally had in her story that was positive until it went bad, and they also didn't stand up for her when she had this untouchable status when Frank Jr. beat her up and put her in the hospital. That really does leave the door open for Darlene to move in and take care of that situation and earn Ruth's trust. I think in a lot of ways it shows where Marty's limitations lie in this situation. He has reason not to go to war with the Kansas City mob. That makes sense. But even if it's just in a symbolic way, I feel like he needed to come to Ruth's side there. And then with Ben, it's just too much. It's, there's no way she can come back and work for them and act like nothing's happened. I thought the scene where they are in the crematorium was another moment where you're just like, Marty, be a human being. Come on, man, do something. Thing. Yeah, you had to do that. That was a thing that had to happen because you have to protect your family and your business and everything else. But there's human costs here and you're not showing any human emotion. Ruth has killed her uncles, has lost her father, and now has lost the love of her life, all for just meeting Marty and falling under his influence. She's not innocent by any means. She was a criminal before the birds came into her life. She met them because she robbed them. And she put that out there to Ben outside of her trailer. That coupled with the exchange at the office where Wendy says it was her fault for getting him out of the mental hospital is a great example of where Ozark is really good. No one's entirely innocent and no one is completely to blame. Most of the bad things that occur do so because they're trying to solve immediate problems that have real consequences that are sitting in front of them. This exchange at the office though it's a powerful moment that is probably only overshadowed in its emotion by the scenes that lead up to Ben's demise. Ruth knew what she was getting into but she's also shown her loyalty to the birds over and over. Now she's over on Team Snell. It's very strange how all of this played out. I thought Darlene, I thought they dialed her character back a bit to make it a little bit better. She was a little bit over the top in season two. While she's still a psychopath and dastardly as anyone, I felt like it was a little bit easier to watch her this season. Strange that Wyatt has hooked up with her. Will be interesting to see where that goes. 
Darlene saw the chance to rebuild the heroin business and create a new family of locals against the birds. She made that symbolic gesture. She went out there and got revenge for Ruth by shooting Frank Jr. And she brokered the deal with the Kansas City mob to actually put things to bed, get the business going. And now with Ruth and Wyatt on her side, she's got things in place to be a real problem for the birds again going forward. The way it looks now after that cliffhanger, they've got a lot of problems in front of them for season four. When you take Ruth and Helen out of the picture, it seems probable that Marty and Wendy will have to really become an alliance. The kids are probably gonna be against them. The Langmores and the Snells are definitely going to be against them. The cartel is certainly going to up what they need. They always do. That's gonna put pressure on them. The FBI is still in the picture and they're all going to be feeling the loss of Ben once things settled down. So it was a pretty good season overall. Some other random parts I liked. I always liked the music in Ozark. I think it's been solid all the way through. Some really good musical moments in this season. Wendy's dream with the REO Speedwagon and killing Marty was pretty cool. I did really enjoy the scenes with the therapist and watching them try to sort things out. I mean, that's what this series has always had is that there's always been this pressure. There's always a time pressure, this thing they got to do. They're always moving to the next thing that they have to do just to stay alive a little bit longer. One of my favorite parts of season two was when Wendy was talking to Mason about how good and evil, the two paths are never that clearly marked. You know, you don't make those decisions that way. It's usually when you just have to do the next thing to get through the thing that you're in that you find yourself going down this evil path. This is a pretty great example of that with Ben having to be sacrificed. And for all that they went through in this season, they're exactly in the same place that they were when it started. They've got to wash money for the cartel and if they come up short or do anything that doesn't please the cartel they're 100 percent expendable so let me know in the comments what you thought what are you hoping to see in season four what were your favorite parts of season three did you think it was better than the previous season or did you like those better please like this video if you enjoyed it please subscribe to my channel if you're new and this is your first time here thanks for watching i will talk to you soon